In this video, we are going to start taking a look at profiles and building profiles from alignments and the various tools that we can use. Now in this drawing, I have my surface and I have a seven and a half kilometer long alignment here that I've added some simple curves just to show us the different options and a couple spiral curves that I made the information up so we can look at that when we get into the profile itself. Now, we need a surface and we need an alignment before we can make a profile. So under the profiles dropdown, I'm gonna create a profile from my surface. This is the only way to start your profile. You have to have a surface to be able to create your profile. Up brings the create profile from surface dialog box. Now, every alignment you have in the drawing will appear on the left here, and every surface you have in the drawing will appear on the right here. So if you have more than one alignment and more than one surface, you definitely need to pay attention and be absolutely sure to select the right alignment and right surface. So because I only have one, I'm going to select my highway, I'm going to select my existing ground. And if we look right down below station range, the entire alignment goes from zero to 7,093 meters. So it's just over seven kilometers long. However, if I wanted to, I could say sample 2,000 to 4,000 and that would just give me the two to 4,000 meter long range. However, this first run through, I'm gonna sample the entire alignment. Now there's a little add button here. Like a number of other places in Civil 3D, we have to select the options we want and we have to add them in, which drops it into the profile list down below. So we see here our name highway type, uh, we can't change the type apparently, data source, what its surface is reading off, the offset if we want to offset it left or right a bit, and I didn't show you that option, I will in a second, update mode, dynamic or static, do we want it to update if we change the surface or do we want it to stay the same, what style do we want to use, and we'll look at different styles in another video, the start and end station, and the elevations, minimum and maximum. So this surface goes from about 1,067 meters to 1,172 meters. We can also sample offsets. So what this means is we could sample, say, 15 meters off to the right of the alignment or 15 meters off to the left of the alignment and include that as well. So it gives you good representation of, say, where your travel lane for a double lane highway is in the uh, existing ground where that elevation is going to be. So we can sample offsets. I tend to do that later when, it, when it's needed. Now we have a couple buttons down here. We can remove this and start again. But once we click draw and profile view, you have to remove it a different way. And I can show you that. There's the OK button. But what the OK button does is simply kick you back to Civil 3D and it doesn't build a profile for you. However, the information we set up under highway and existing ground is already here. And now you see we cannot remove this because it's already been built. So let's click the Drawn Profile View button and take a look at the options. So again, we can change the alignment if we want. The Profile View name, I like to name this the same as my alignment just to keep things straight. If you have multiple alignments, it's easier to find highway and highway and 50th Avenue and 50th Avenue instead of having profile view name dash one dash two, et cetera. What profile view style do we want? Do we want one that's more uh, representative of the ground that's out there? Do we want two times vertically exaggerated, five times vertically exaggerated, or 10 times vertically exaggerated? So all this means is it's gonna stretch it vertically up and down to give us a better representation of the ground, especially if you live in flat areas. So I'm gonna click next. Station range. Again, here we can tell it if we want it to be automatic and sample the whole alignment or specify it. So do I wanna go zero to 2000, 2000 to 4000? If we click, I've left it on automatic. If we click next, the profile view height. Do we want Civil 3D to automatically build the height for us or do we want to specify and constrain it from 1060 to 1180? I use user specified when we go to set up the plans 
and I'll type in some nice even numbers. It makes the profile look better because every single one is going to be different when we start building our plan views. However, for this, we'll leave it on automatic. I'll click next and it asks uh, which profile we've sampled. So if we have multiple surfaces in here, they'll all show up in here and we can select, do we want to clip grids, split, etc. This option that's grayed out because I have no pipes or pressure networks in my drawing, it, this is a great option if you only have one alignment, one road and one set of pipes. If you're designing a subdivision, this is not a great option because it's gonna add every pipe in the drawing into your profile regardless of where it's at. Data bands, we'll talk about bands in a later video, but this just displays information at the bottom of the profile and our profile hatch options. So what do we wanna hatch? cut, fill, multiple boundaries. How do we want our profile to look? I'm just gonna leave it with no hatch. I'm then gonna click create profile view. And Civil 3D asked me to select the profile view origin. Now I'm gonna place this just over here just so I can show you the way this builds. So you have to specify the lower left corner and it builds it off to the right. And I think I wrecked that, so I need to take a look at it. So it builds it off to the right. Now, this is not going to work because you're going to have to freeze more layers. You're going to have other stuff in the way, and it's just going to become a pain. A lot of people love to select things and use the move command. However, when it comes to civil 3D objects, we have to be very careful and very selective in how we move stuff. I'm simply going to grab the green boundary, use the grip, and move my profile over. If you notice, this profile, the blue cyan colored line came with my profile. Now, if you grab the entire thing and move it, bad things could happen. It's, it could apply a double move. It's moving, you're moving this and you're moving this, but this cyan line is already attached to the profile. So you could inadvertently be performing a double move on some objects. I know that when we move surfaces and points attached to the surfaces, it moves the points and then it double moves the surface. I don't have any points in this drawing, so I can't show that, but just be careful when you're moving stuff. So we started with alignment and a surface. We created a profile from our surface. So if we look at here, we've gone from zero to 7,094, and it's given us a representation of what the existing ground looks like from the beginning to the end of our alignment. So that was creating a profile from a surface. And in the next video, we'll look at creating a profile from layout.